uh, Matthew de Klerk. Oh, wait. Rob <laughs> Orman. Matthew if I could Klerk only is out be saving the world. Handsome yeah. and as articulate as Dr. de Klerk. No, it's no. very difficult to be as handsome as him or to spell your name as confusingly. But today we have in Hippo Education Studios, I am Aaron Bright. This is Rob Orman. You may know him from such shows as ER Cast, Essentials of Emergency Medicine. He is uh, ubiquitous, as they say. And we're lucky to have you here in the studio, kind of. <laughs> Kind of in the Wearing the same shirt that she wore before. We are actually talking about EP Monthly. This article in EP Monthly, November 2018, is from somebody that you may know named Judith Tintinelli. Uh, it is called From the Front Lines of Hurricane Florence, From Battling Bats to Devising Innovative Response Techniques, North Carolina EPs shared their experiences. There's a lot of cool stats in here. Did you take anything away from this guy? As I read through this, I kept thinking that, you know, you see all these movies about the apocalypse the zombie apocalypse, this or that. I like those. Movies. Everybody's screwing each other in the apocalypse. Yeah. They're, eat, they're <laughs> eating each other. They're stealing from each other. <laughs> but whenever you hear these stories about the emergency providers and EMS and disaster response, invariably, it's everybody banding together. Everybody yeah. banding together to make it happen and then how incredible it was. And you know, I mean, that's part of the tribe of emergency medicine. It's like, that's just how we are, this common ethic of yeah. we're gonna get it done, gonna help people. And yeah. the other thing I got out of this was with the helping people, you know, you think that the you think that it's gonna be about the disaster related trauma, but a lot of it or most of it was about just taking care of the regular medical stuff that now your infrastructure, your normal infrastructure can't do, and then all these yeah. medically fragile patients keeping them alive until things pass yeah. over. It's crazy. I, I you know I think that's one thing that always comes together. And if you can be proud of something, it's, there's a lot of things to be proud of in emergency medicine, really. But that's one of the things like where else in society can you be a part of of recovering from disaster? It's like every day you're kind of battling the suffering kind of thing, which I think you can you can get uh, proud of if you're thinking about it. But if you're in the middle of a hurricane and there's people dropping dead everywhere and you all band together, that's something I'll never forget the train disasters and what have you, you know, that I did when I was a residency, but I've probably forgotten 92% of all the people that we resuscitated. So you're making a good point, Rob Orman. It's almost like you do a podcast or something. Do you do a podcast? <laughs> podcast? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, uh, and I, was, I was thinking that we will we will band together in the zombie apocalypse, but we'll yeah. probably also be the first eaten. Oh, dude, we will so be the first eaten. I yeah. think about that with Ebola. I'm yeah. like, sorry, you know, like two weeks into the massive Ebola airborne uh, ending of humanity, it's like, I read a book once where they did that, where it's like, first thing that happened during the apocalypse is all the medical people died. And then we went from there. Then it went to the dark ages for 6,000 years. So <laughs> wait, just how did pray we for a from robot. the beginning to the end of this? Oh, it got really I don't dark. Know, man. I got to go have a beer. What is it like 9 a.m. in the morning? I can't handle this kind of crap. 